call the special <coughs> call meeting of Portsmouth City Council to order. And Madam Clerk, I'm going to ask you to first read the call letter and then uh, call the roll. Yes, sir. Members of the City Council, please attend a call meeting, a special call meeting of the City Council to be held in the sixth floor conference room, 801 Crawford Street. 6 p.m. Monday, April 30th, 2018, for the purpose of discussion of the operating budget and CIP. In addition, you may consider a motion to go into closed meeting by order of the mayor. Mr. Clark? Here. Mrs. Lucasburg? Here. Mr. Moody? Here. Ms. Simmons? Here. Mr. Smith? Here. Dr. Whitaker? Present. Mayor Rowe? Here. Ladies and gentlemen and colleagues, uh, we've had extensive briefings by the city manager as she prepared the budget. And then after she prepared and introduced the budget, we've had extensive uh, briefings by the city manager and her budget team. And we've had uh, two uh, public hearings. So we've heard a lot of information, both uh, about how the budget was being prepared uh, about the budget after it was proposed and from the public. This is our first opportunity to discuss everything that we've heard uh, tonight, so there are no presentations uh, at all. This is a discussion among council. And so to kind of get a feel for where we are as a point of the, uh, departure, we have the city manager's proposed budget, and I think it would be in order to find if there's consensus about this budget uh, as it's presented or do we want to change any of the priorities? Uh, if we change priorities and it's revenue and expenditure neutral, that's one thing. If we add uh, to the bottom line, then we have to consider uh, where we're going to uh, fund that. So let's start the discussion and I'll start with you, uh, Ray. With me? Yes, sir. <laughs> Um, how much time do we have? <laughs> All night. Mm -hmm. No, no, no five-minute time. No, sir. Well, <clears throat> a lot of things that were bottled up listening to the public the other night. A lot of which was distressing. Um, I guess the bottom line here, and I, 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 I took notes on a, on a lot of the speakers. Uh, the, the two that stood out the most, uh, I would say, is Superintendent Bracey and Board Member Sarah Duncan Hines. Um, I guess I was just put back, uh, number one, uh, how the um, superintendent spoke about, you know, visiting an elementary class and, and then to, to bring the, the children <laughs> to speak to us at a public hearing. Um, I, just one little sidebar. I visited Parkview for career day. And um, I primarily went there as my role as Dominion Energy. But in the course of the conversation, I mentioned my part-time jobs. And one of them was a city councilman, and another one was a Virginia High School League official. Um, those were paid uh, positions. And and I believe it was the fourth, fourth graders. And, you know, they, they were mesmerized by, you know, what I told them, at, more so at how I could do all of those things versus, you know, any details of it. Um, but at no time, you know, were they interested in what the teachers were paid or what was, was happening. Uh, in the city or things like that because they have n no clue they, they don't they aren't exposed to that so the only I guess I could have prodded them by bringing up a discussion to try to give them a little lesson on it but it's, it's way over their heads the, the budget and the budget process is so deep and so wide that there's no way an, uh, an elementary ch child is going to understand that and probably not even a sixth grader and I was just felt it was a little inappropriate to parade them before us at a public hearing, that out of the way. Um, but also, back to the superintendent said, um, I would rather have pay raise for teachers than a new school. 
if I had a choice. And then that brought back memories as to, and scratching my head as to, well, why did we parade to Churchland Middle and the Churchland Elementary and got the grand tour and, and got all of the information as to how um, those schools need to be replaced sooner or later. I mean, maybe y'all got a different perception, but my perception was that we needed to start acting pretty soon to, um, to get moving on first replacement of Churchland Middle School. And, and because of the condition, because of the numbers of students is overcrowded. And that's, that's how I left that, you know. So, and, and then to hear, you know, the uh, city manager made preparations for it in the CIP, um, and I can't remember, was it this time or next time? But, um, so the city manager, um, you know, is preparing for it um, in the CIP. And, but then to get, you know, and, and that's fine if the superintendent, you know, wants to forego that. But also I picked up out of that, that his speech was, I just heard the word teachers. And, and that's, a, that's a figure that, you know, I'm curious to know. What is it gonna take for just the teachers? Was it $2 million that was requested in addition? Uh, did that include, you know, all the staff, or did it include just teachers, and maybe it included um, the securities and other issues that they wanted to take care of? Um, I'm getting a little confused. But, but I, I would imagine, you know, that giving just the teachers a raise was, would probably be about half of that, uh, $2 million. Um, so then, then I'm saying, well, if um, that's where we are now, we need to go back to the drawing board as, as a council and, and, and back up and, and take another look and see, you know, what we can do. One other thing I heard him say uh, in his talk was that if we didn't do it, he found a way to do it. I think he, he meant he would find a way to get the teachers a raise because that's what he said. Maybe not the whole, you know, um, school system. So, um, and, and he can, you know, if town will allow, can clarify that. But I would like to hear him clarify that, uh, reiterate that. But the bottom line with me now, uh, I realized with some of the information that was presented to us that it, it wasn't all accurate. I mean, I've spent 10 years on the school board. I kind of knew that number I saw for the superintendent was really not salary. It was, it was a lot more. And, but I, I didn't have a clue about some of the other areas, what they made. I, I haven't kept up with that. So, uh, and I feel a little, you know, uh, bad by not speaking up and saying something about that. I, I knew it was more than salary. It had to be, because he didn't make that much um, basic salary. So uh, again, um, I'm just concerned that we also know what they want and what direction they would like to see us go in. Um, I heard no no school. I didn't hear the chairman say say that, you know. And one school board member um, and the superintendent said a choice. So uh, I guess where I stand is uh, I just like to step back and, and take another look and understand what it is they really want. Um, do we need to invest in a new school? Which you know. Also, uh, one one good thing about all of this is that uh, I'll only be here to December thirty first. There's going to be some real serious situations next year because school enrollment is declining, and and it's projected to continue climbing. When that happens, everybody knows that the state's going to pull away based on ADM. They're going to pull away. Then we have to keep keep it going up. But it would behoove, you know. Uh, school board members to take the show me attitude as to whether or not, you know, their budgeting process is is keeping up par and is really what they they can do and cannot do. Um, to me that's 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 kind of doubtful. There there are hundreds of lines items in a school board budget. So um, and then there's a, a lot of different things. I also realize that probably pushing more than eighty percent of their budget is personnel. Um, 
I believe, in that neighborhood somewhere. And, and it, uh, the rest is a lot of operational and other uh, kinds of capital things and debt and other things like that. So um, I, I would encourage, you know, especially these new uh, school board members that may be coming and may not, even the old, the ones that are sitting, need to really step, step back and know uh, for themselves what, you know, is, what they can do and what they cannot do. And um, so I'm, I'm just a little taken back by, you know, what, what I heard and what was presented to us. And um, right now, I, I'm not prepared to say uh, keep things the way they are, but that we need to just step back and take another look. Okay. Bill? I think one of the uh, questions that my colleague just touched base on that all of us heard and I think it's a, I think it's a big question that needs to an answer, and the gentleman who can answer it is here tonight. And is it either or? They, you know, does the school system not want uh, new schools, and would they rather have teachers raises instead of new schools? I would like to, Mayor, I would like to get an answer to that tonight, and uh, maybe uh, Dr. Bracy could elaborate on that. We're going to go around the table and do our talking. Then. Okay. Yeah. Re reference the budget. Uh, it, you know, the, <clears throat> the process seems to get uh, uglier uh, each year. I thought we had uh, a good uh, working relationship. And, uh, you know, a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of words that uh, were said that were unbecoming. Uh, to elected officials, you know, the use of words like conscien conscious uh, stupidity. I don't think uh, nobody on either board is, is uh, uh, anointed with stupidity. I think uh, hopefully what we're anointed with is the, the same goals in mind, and that's to uh, produce uh, uh, better students and to attract more students to our schools, which the stigma uh, of uh, the fact that uh, a lot of people still feel that our public school system is not quality is still out there. So we're, we're still fighting that. And I think when words like that are used, uh, uh, that uh, that doesn't uh, serve us well as a city. And uh, I think it's a bad reflection on those who uh, want to engage in that uh, kind of dialogue. Uh, reference the, uh, the budget. Uh, I've spoke before uh, about the re retired uh, police and firefighters, and I think we uh, uh, tasked the manager uh, to come back with some information, uh, probably at our next official work session, but uh, uh, in, in lieu of that, uh, worst case scenario, I, I think they're, uh, they're deserving of, uh, 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 of a bonus. Uh, 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 as a group, and also our general wage employees. You, you know, we're talking about teachers. We, we got employees that uh, put in a hard day's work, and they working in all kinds of uh, uh, weather. And uh, there's nothing in this budget for them. And uh, so, I would uh, I would like to, for them to be on that list as well. Uh, perhaps a bonus uh, at the at the end of the year if we can't uh, uh, produce a wage. Uh, I like to commend the uh, uh, the manager for keeping our real estate tax rate uh, from going up. Dollar uh, thirty is still the highest in the region, but um, you know, without good uh, stewardship of the budget process, uh, it could it could be higher. <coughs> Uh, the fact is, we're still a cash-strapped city uh, due to a lot of things beyond our control. I certainly don't feel that it's uh, uh, because of uh, unwise or lavish uh, spending. Uh, every year we're faced with, uh, with, with needs, uh, uh, and, and people uh, have a lot of wants. Uh, I think staff has done a, a pretty decent job of uh, addressing most of them, so I'm, uh, I'm all right. Okay. Lisa? All right. Um, and uh, I'd like to commend the mayor for 
providing this opportunity for us to come together um, tonight and that we were all willing to to bring our ideas to the table. Um, as I spoke on Tuesday night um, at the meeting, um, I stated that the information that the city manager presents to us, me as a new council member, I take that as fact. I mean, what I'm given is is what I have to to make a decision on, and and I. Um, uh, heard all of the comments from people bringing their, um, you know, comments to the floor regarding our budget. So many teachers and the the, the association, PTA association, and the, um, the um, all of the other um, students and and just family members who was there. And you know, I, I started to feel you know, some kind of way about what was being presented. And uh, when Dr. Bracey got up and stated that he would rather for the teachers to have a raise than to get a school, you know, that was, it was like a shocker to me um, because I thought that that was what the the, the report, and, and I know it wasn't free for KB Khan to come in to and to do that kind of a study, you know, for us to say that, you know, our schools needed to be replaced. Um, and I thought that that was, you know, our whole purpose of, of getting that and going on the tour. And you know, and when I heard that, I didn't know that it was an option to say, no, we don't want a school, we'd rather have a raise. And I do understand that CIP funds are grant funds and it's not transferable to cash. So when I stated that, you know, I, I would rather, since they don't want a school, let's not do a school and let's, let's give them a raise since we didn't give them one last year, you know, and we did give our city staff a raise, you know, so I wanted to be able to take a look at how we could possibly fund that. And I don't want our real estate tax to go up because I don't want to, to be a trade-off where the whole city pays for, you know, opportunity for us to, to be able to give teachers a raise. We have to be fiduciary responsible over our budget ourselves and knowing what is the right and the wrong thing to do. Um, with the ADM um, going down and the General Assembly, like I stated when I spoke on Tuesday night, if they're not giving us money and, uh, and if we had gotten the money from the General Assembly to the tune of the number of students that are enrolled in school, that's somewhere around $7 million that we would have as a city if we got students to come to school. So we want to know why aren't the schools, students coming to school? Um, so I sat there and, and I kind of took some notes as people were speaking and I said, okay, if kids are not coming to school after middle school, if they're dropping out at the high school levels, because they're either going to private school, Christian school, uh, home school, or no school at all, and our numbers are going down, why don't we eliminate a high school? Eliminate one of those high schools, eliminate Wiltshire or Wilson High School and make that a middle school, make it manor, middle, magnet school. And because that's where the kids are coming, coming to school. And since we are not gonna build a new school, we can take one that we already have in existence, eliminate one of the high school, then we just have uh, Churchillon High School and I.C. Norcom High School as our two signature high schools. And then that way, uh, when they're looking at what schools we have based on our ADM, then maybe somewhere along that way it would average out to where the number of students that we have going or participating in those schools uh, would be a, a greater opportunity uh, for us. And back to the, the fire uh, with the retirees, um, of course, we've given them a bonus, a bonus, a bonus, and their numbers are lower. We mentioned, um, uh, speakers mentioned that $10,000 is what, you know, some of the seniors have, and they have to make a choice between food or medicine. If we gave them a, a bonus last year, then let's give them a, a COLA this year. And, and, you know, I just want to take a look at so many things, you know, if we had an opportunity to be able to do that. I don't know where the meat in, in it is. I just know how to look at the item and see what's there. I don't know how to <coughs> retract out or go back and find it. But, you know, that's something that I would like, like to be able to consider um, in addition to our, our teachers uh, getting a raise. And then having our school board to be, you know, fiduciary responsible over their budgets, too. You know, we're giving them $52.8 million. And then I see there's a request for 47 new positions, but if we don't need a new school and, and then the students aren't coming, you know, where are all of these numbers? So we have to be responsible, but, but they have to be responsible too. Um, so I would like the, the, um, the question answered about, you know, why the middle school, what if we're going to sink $38 million into building a new school and $3 million over the next 20 years, if we don't have to do that, then we don't need to take that seat. So that's where I am. Um, well, as far as the school is concerned, I, I too was shocked about the middle school. I thought that was a done deal, a, a necessary thing, that that was the reason MV Con had been contracted to provide the information and that we went out to take a look ourselves. Um, 
uh, to me, I, 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 it's not an either or. How, you know, if 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 a man, if a new middle school is not mandatory now, or in the next couple of years, then there are lots of things that were put aside, and, and the city CIP program, the public safety headquarters, the city hall, the jail. We we got a huge list of projects that took a back burner to that school to take. 60 million out of 67 million dollars worth of available debt service. So, I need to do a school. I'm all for getting ready to do a school, but that doesn't free up cash for a raise. You know, I'd love to have the teachers make more money. I'd love to have everybody in the room make more money, but I don't see where it comes from. And if we're not giving our own employees any kind of raise, I, I don't know. I don't know how we go. You get one, and you don't. I, I just I don't see where the revenue comes from, and I am not willing to raise taxes for a raise for anybody. Um, I'm concerned um, also about the um, you know a lot of the rhetoric in the last week or two has been uh, unbecoming of many folks. Um, I would like to know um, further about the bus money um, that there was some letter of intent uh, from four years ago, you know, if if indeed that 600 and odd thousand dollars a year was supposed to come back to the city as the city puts a million in for buying buses and maybe we don't need to give any more money for the buses. Um, you know, I, that, I question that. that. That takes me back to, you know, what the court told us to do, which was read and pay attention and make sure everything's done properly. Um, and I think we need to do that. As far as the rest of the budget is concerned, I'm I'm delighted with the way the rest of it has been presented, and I would, um, you know, be happy to, to vote for it. Okay. Okay. In reference to the school, the new school, and just to echo what everybody else has said and what Elizabeth just said, when we only have approximately 67 million of debt service, and that would take up 60 million of that, and to have a school board member stand before us at our meeting and say that. We did not ask for a school. We have not voted for a school. We didn't say we wanted a school. Then that's why I stepped back and said, well, maybe we need to hold up on this. Not that we don't need one at some point, but I believe at this time we should take that project out and that way it has our debt service free. We can still discuss it in the future. doesn't mean we can't come back and discuss a school or other needs, but at this point I would be all for taking that out. The other thing is the uh, one million dollars for the school buses, which that's not really part of their budget. That's an add-on that we give them. The information we received, there was a memorandum for five years that we'd give them the million and they would give us the state funding back, which has not happened. So technically, on paper, they would owe us three million dollars, which obviously we'll never see that. But at this point, you know, I've, I've heard it said from the other side, well, well, there is no signed agreement. Well, if that's your defense, then there's no signed agreement for us to give you a million dollars this year. So I think there's a lot of other needs that we can do within the city and utilize that million dollars for something else. So with that being said, I'd be happy taking the school project out of the budget and taking the one million dollars for school buses out of the budget at this point. But the rest of the budget, I'm, I'm happy with at this time. Dr. Woodcraft. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, context, context is always important. And I believe that um, when you look at the context uh, out of which this whole meeting was called, um, it's interesting it was framed that this is a meeting now that we've heard from the citizens where we can discuss. Um, that wasn't the context out of which the meeting was called. Um, the meeting was called during a time where there was significant discussion going on uh, in council chambers about supporting education and um, that's when the special call meeting was given. Uh, my issue, which I think uh, council is uh, very aware of, um, is that we were presented a financial overview uh, last week by uh, Davenport and Company. Uh, in that financial overview, uh, it showed uh, the 15% uh, uh, policy that the city has adopted uh, for its general fund. Uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, uh, at that 15% uh, level, it was something like $34 million that um, has to be uh, unassigned in the general fund. Uh, 
based on the figures that were presented, um, we're at a 25% level of $54 million. And so when we talk about the funding of the all school employees, um, there is cushion in um, our general fund uh, to that would not touch the reserves. Um, we're not talking about going into below, and that's that's why I was specific in asking uh, Davenport last week uh, about uh, when is our credit rating impacted? At, at what point is it? 14 percent? He he couldn't give a statistic figure, and so with the cushion that we have with that. 15% uh, and we have 25% presently uh, in the general fund on the books uh, as audited, there's more than enough there to fund the request. Uh, the, the request to fund the uh, school employees, when we say where the money is coming from, um, the, the funds are there. The, the matter uh, and issue at hand is whether uh, we have uh, council members who, as I said before, are pro-education. And uh, we can come up with um, all of these scenarios and present uh, tidbits of what was said. Uh, I find it interesting that I didn't know that one school board member spoke for the school board. That's why I say context is important. I'm, I'm finding interesting that an elected body is basing the comments by one school board member as being the desire of the school board. I didn't know. I didn't know one council person could speak for council. Uh, each of us have differing interests and views. That doesn't mean if if one stands up and makes a statement that that is representative of the body whole. And so these conversations I'm hearing about what one person said, um, the, the conversations about the bus money, uh, I haven't seen anyone present any voted upon uh, minutes uh, by the council, by the school board, uh, where what you're speaking to uh, was actually put on record. I heard there's a letter out there, but I didn't know boards acted off of letters from those that uh, have not been authorized to do that. And so um, my position is that the schools need to be funded. I have expressed that um, since day one. Uh, the funds are there. Uh, this issue is not that complicated. Uh, we're making it more complicated than what it is because um, we have an agenda of not wanting to address the schools as requested. And so, therefore, it really becomes a citizen's issue. That is uh, the type of funding we want to see in our schools. And I believe as long as we have elected officials who are not pro-education, we're going to keep seeing these type of back and forth um, discussions going on between the school board when those funds are available. Lastly, um, just to mention context again, um, I thought it was more than appropriate for to hear from employees and from students. They're all citizens. Um, I, I think as we look at April about to go out and um, we commemorating the uh, 50th anniversary of the uh, assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King, um, one of the major strategies that was used in trying to correct injustices in the school system, society, uh, was the use of children um, in uh, significant marches. And, and so I'm, I'm not going to ignore the cultural and historical relevancy of what took place uh, last week. Uh, I think that if we can use the test scores of children uh, to determine how many prisoners we build, we can certainly hear from their voices to uh, hear what they think um, of our school system and funding. And so I'm certainly in agreement uh, with uh, funding our schools. The money is there uh, for us to make it seem like it isn't. I think we're misleading the public. It's a matter of priorities. And so um, 
I, I would hope that we could find some type of moral courage uh, from our administration. Uh, if we're going to run down the sidelines and cheer for these students, we need to also run up our budget and put money in place uh, to make sure they have the quality education and, and, and not put it on the schools to keep cutting programs um, in order to meet uh, the desires of council and not uh, fully funding education. I think we're going to see on the back end that if we continue along this route, um, and I'm already seeing it on, on the other side, um, that our children are going to uh, lag significantly behind. Uh, I have children in the schools. Uh, I have two children who are presently in the school system. I don't know how many of you have children in our school system presently, but I do. I have a vested interest. Um, the issue with the SOLs, um, I put, I put uh, my wife and I put our children in late view when it was not accredited. Um, we made that choice because we have overestimated the SOLs. Uh, we have quality teachers. Uh, the SOLs can pivot on whether two or three students pass the test that day. Does that mean that's not a quality teacher? Um, so I'm just suggesting that we keep context. We have an education system which I believe if it is fully funded as should be, it can be a jewel of this area. It can be what attracts families to this area. It will pull families back into our school system. But if we continue along the route we're going, uh, we're going to continue uh, to see some of the patterns that we see. Thank you. All right, my, my view. Uh, we have two components. We have the operating budget and we have the CIP. And then within the operating budget, we've got the two big funds, the general fund and the school fund. On the CIP side, uh, I'm for the construction of a new middle school, and I'd like to see that stay in the budget. I think it's important for us. I think the, the school board is on the right track to restructure the school the grades for middle school school and move it from two to three and that puts us in line with every other uh, jurisdiction whether it's a city or a county in the state and if we do that then that means we're going to have a crowded middle school um, I'm not uh, concerned about one member of school board I, I, I know full well that it takes the majority to speak for school board so I think it's important to keep that project uh, in the CIP, and I commend Dr. Patton for finding a way to start that process and that we get committed to that uh, construction and move forward on that. On the general fund side, I'm not for a tax increase. If we add anything thing to the budget, though, that's a reoccurring expense, I'm against using fund balance for reincurring expenses, particularly salaries. And I don't care how much money we have in, in the fund balance, it just does that someday it could be zero. And mm -hmm. then what are we gonna do? We're gonna hit the wall, we'll have a big hole in our operating budget. Um, I'm concerned about salaries across the board. I would love to be able to see the city manager propose a general wage increase for our uh, employees and recommend sufficient funds for the for the schools for them to give uh, a salary increase but budgets about priorities and, and trying to decide which priority you do the, the next year given the amount of funds that you have and our funds are limited if we keep the tax rate at a dollar thirty if the sentiment is to <coughs> do more in this budget to use this as a point of departure and add to, to that budget, then we need to have the courage, and I don't see it. I'm, not, we need to have the will, let me put it that way, to increase taxes. I apologize, courage is the wrong word to, to use. As far as the school bus money, um, I think that's a non issue. I think. Um, I don't know what Dr. Stuckbush said. Uh, 
I'm the one that proposed the million dollars when I was city manager, and it was a way of jump-starting the school bus replacement because the conversation then was that we had an agent fleet and that they were using, they being the school operations, the school administration was using their operating budget uh, to renew the fleet. And I recommended to council, and council uh, went along with that, that we appropriate a million dollars a year for five years, and that any money that they got didn't come back to the city, went back into that capital uh, project. So that if there was a million dollars that the city put in, and the state, and I'm, I'm making this up, the state, state said, okay, here's 600,000 for transportation, then the amount became $1.6 million for that year to replace buses, and it could be a faster acceleration, as a redundancy, a faster process of uh, replacing the bus <coughs> buses. So I'm not hung up on that at all. Not at all. So to conclude, uh, my position is that I think this budget uh, is good given the financial uh, parameters that we gave the city manager um, that it includes a very important capital project and that's uh, the construction of the schools and I'm not willing to use fund balance for any type of reoccurring operating expense whether it's salaries or utilities or whatever. Now, we had, uh, and I'm going to recognize you in a minute, we had a request um, from um, two members of council to clarify the statement that um, Dr. Uh, Bracey made. And at, at the last meeting, when I called this meeting, uh, Dr. Bracey and Claude did come up to me during the recess, and I told them that we exactly what I said tonight. This is going to be a discussion amongst ourselves, and I am because we've had all the briefings from the city manager. We had two public hearings, and we have not had a chance to discuss the budget. I invited Dr. Bracey and Mr. Perry to come in case we had any questions. And they are present tonight. So I think that if we have questions of, of them that have been articulated, that would be appropriate that we give them the chance to answer that question. All right? Yes. Having said that. <coughs> well, okay. I did have a uh, question in regards to um, what you were mentioning about the fund balance, that, yes, that you, you're against um, using fund balance for reoccurring expenses. When you say you are against using the fund balance, what are you talking about particularly? I'm talking about the reserve that we have that's a Right, right. Yeah. So you're talking about that 15% policy that creates the reserve. No, sir. It's the whole amount. Well, uh, there's... Yeah. No, let me tell you what I'm talking yeah. about. You asked my... Well, I didn't, I didn't know. I was just agreeing. Okay. Yeah, go, I'm not cutting. Go, go right it's, it's the whole amount, whether it's... Take part of the 15%. Um, it is a pot of money that sits there that's unallocated, and I'm okay to expend that money on one-time expenses, but I'm not okay with spending that money on reoccurring expenses, because that money, every time we spend it down, it's going to go down, 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 and at some point in time, we're going to be faced with having a hole in our operating budget. I think our operating budget for recurring expenses need to be funded by reoccurring revenues. And the fund balance is not a reoccurring revenue. Right. Well, um, first of all, when you say it's a pot of money that's sitting there, so when I, when I look at this uh, report from Davenport and it has unassigned fund balance um, in 2000. 16 to 58 million four hundred twenty-seven thousand seven twelve. Um, are you saying that that is sitting in an actual account? Um, I thought that as it was related to us that as of June 30th, 
that's what that figure represents and that it can fluctuate throughout the year. Matter of okay. fact, I thought I just heard you say that it could go down to zero um, in your previous comments. When you talk about not touching the uh, reserve, um, once again, our reserve is based on the policy of 15%. Matter of fact, Davenport mentioned at the last meeting about raising that 15% to 18%. So the, the issue of touching the fund balance, that's not the correct language. You're, you're talking about the reserve that is created because, because even Davenport mentioned about taking some of that, what you're calling the fund balance, and putting it into a capital fund. And so that was mentioned at the last that's meeting. Correct. So it's right. And well, that's well um, my, my point is, is that there is a cushion there. Um, with 25% above where we should be, um, I think that this is a time for reoccurring, that the salaries for our school employees, that needs to be built into uh, our budget, and we have the cushion here uh, with the overage that is above our 15% uh, policy and so I'm I'm in disagreement with um, that we can you know philosophically disagree on um, at what point do funds become available I I thought I heard them say our credit rating is based on whether we adhere to our 15 percent policy it's not whether we touch monies that are above that I, I didn't hear that and that's why I ask you, in listening to me, to don't get hung up on the 15% or 18% or 20%. I'm talking about the fund balance that sits that's unassigned. Right. Okay. Right. Don't, I'm not concerned about the 15%. The, the minute we start spending it on reoccurring money uh, expenses, but, but, it, that, that's... Well, let me ask you this. <coughs> The general fund has, um, on June 30th of 2016, 2017, on page 21, it, it has a certain balance in it. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. That Of that balance, there is an unassigned amount. No, sir. Okay. Well, the, then the it says here. Unassigned. No, not the whole $233 million isn't unassigned. If you're saying uh, there's the uh, unassigned fund balance, it's just that. No, no. I'm saying as of June 30th, according to the Davenport report that we received, there is a general fund revenue figure of $233 million. That's as of June 30th. Of that $233 million, there is a certain percentage of that which has to remain unassigned. No, that's our policy. Let right, me, that's what let, I'm saying. That's our 15 percent policy. Let's, just, let's assume that I have a job that pays me $1,000 a month, but my lifestyle re requires me. No, well, please, I'm, I'm please, just saying, no, I, no, I, let me I understand finish. fully. Just stick, with, stick with, the, just stick with the Stick with our figures, because no, I'm going to speak, Doctor Whitaker. No, I'm not being antagonistic. I'm just saying okay, stick well, with stick with out, these man. figures, because your example. I got, I got the floor. Yeah, go right on. All right, thank you. I have a job that pays me a thousand dollars a month. I have a lifestyle that requires me to spend twelve hundred dollars a month. I go to my savings account each month to make up that difference. At some point in time, that savings account will be at zero. And I'm faced with doing one of two things. I'm faced with either cutting my lifestyle to live within my income or getting a second job. And for us, when we use the, our savings account is the unassigned fund balance of the general fund. And when we hit that point, we either have to reduce services or raise taxes. And that's why I am against using fund balance for reoccurring expenditures. It has nothing to do whether we're at 15% or 18% or 25%. 
it's a philosophical, it's fiscally irresponsible. Well, if what you're saying is true, then why is it that it fluctuates? It fluctuates to, depending on the right. flow of cash. Right. Right. You, know, you have another one. Right. I understand that. That's, that's, that's my point. It's not like it's a fixed figure that's there all the time. It fluctuates. But it's, it doesn't fluctuate to wide uh, swings. You can well, pretty much. Well, I think what I unless think. Unless you I spend fifty million, if you got fifty million dollars on on June thirtieth, unless you spend fifty million dollars during the course of the year, you're going to have fifty well, million dollars. Does at the, the policy? Does our policy say that there has to be fifty-eight million dollars in unassigned on June thirtieth? That is something for council to decide. No, no, no. That's what I'm asking. Does our policy say that, or does our policy say there needs to be 15 percent? It says 15 percent. Right. That's my point. That we have 25 percent. We're we're talking right. past each other. And uh, I share well, with everybody I, my. I think I think it's a it's a decision that councils have to decide. Do you touch? Do you touch okay. that 25 percent that's over? Yeah, I hear you, and I think everybody understands your position. Um, not to beat a dead horse, you're you're advocating that we grant the the salary increase for teachers from the fund balance. I understand I'm, I'm that. I'm saying instead of this, uh, the the financial advisor mentioned touching it and putting it into a capital fund. We'll get a chance to. to what, what's the difference between if I put it there versus put it into education? Okay. It's a philosophical it. difference. We'll get a chance to determine whether or not you've got the votes. To do it. Well, that, that's why I said it's a citizens issue. I doubt if we have the votes up here to okay. do that. I'm clear, but I just want the citizens to be clear that the money is there to do it. Uh, okay. That's 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 what I just want to make sure Thank we're you, clear. Sir. We have a question over here, Bill. Yeah, yeah, I, I did. I guess trying to get my hands around this discussion. Um, how does the, the fund balance gets funded uh, to increase, depending on on the progress, depending on the revenues mm -hmm. each year? Mm -hmm. if, if it's of the amounts where you know it's an excess, then then doesn't that go into the fund balance? Well, the way in Virginia, how does it get funded? Okay, I'm going to answer your question. In Virginia, you have to have a balanced budget for local governments. Right. That means that revenues have got to equal expenditures. Right. Okay, at the end of the year, R equal E. If you spend less than E, let's say that you spend uh, E minus 10, <coughs> okay, and revenues come in as predicted, you got $10 then, you got 10 that goes into the fund okay. balance. Mr. Can I suggest we hear from the chief financial officer to explain? He asked me the question. Yeah. I know, but I'm just saying we do have a chief financial officer. Okay, but I, have and I, more you know, I think that would be the more appropriate. Well, thank yeah. you for your opinion. I, but um, at the end of the year, if you've got revenues that exceed the amount that you're projecting and you spend right to your budget, then that goes in. Right. So it's made up of either spending less or getting more revenue. That's right. how it gets in. And, right, and, and that's what I know. That's what I'm getting at. I guess if we do take it from there, then we're taking a risk that it won't be put back. And and if it, because if, if we fund, you know, a raise that's out in the future, that's reoccurring. And mm -hmm. that's got to be paid somehow. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you take it's not a one time like everybody's saying. So some somewhere either the revenues in the following years got to come back to replace it, or or then then it just starts going down <laughs> if we don't if it doesn't get replaced. Sure. So that's I mean I, I'm I'm it feeling what, what you're saying. So you take a risk, and that that's my point to do that. Even though it's there, and and you can you can bank on that, but you can't bank on the economy and the markets and mm. things like that. So it could, it could be a hole that may not, it may maybe take four or five years to recover. When I was on the council before, it was mm, less than thirty million dollars mm -hmm. over years. It is built up to where it is. It also solidifies our credit rating to have it there. 
and, and when you start whittling at it and whittling at it, and, and the revenue doesn't come back in to put it back up, you, you, you risk credit rating, you risk not being able to cover that reoccurring thing. That, that's all I'm getting at. Yeah. My understanding. Yeah. Perhaps, perhaps the CFO can share what, uh, what would the fiscal picture look like if our rating went from a double A to an A uh, as far as the cost. And, and I'm just talking about uh, ballpark. Uh, uh, I would think that that would have significant uh, impact on our uh, uh, our fund balance and everything else that we do. All right, because we are talking about this at this moment, uh, I'm going to ask the city manager to either answer Bill's question or have the CFO. Yes, um, Mrs. Um, Seward will come forward if the You'll if go to the lectern, please. The, uh, council you, request. Do you understand the question? Yes, she does. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of Council. Um, it, it is a correct statement that your credit rating does dictate and actually translate into your operating budget costs. Um, the lower your credit rating, kind of like in our personal lives, the lower your credit score, the more you're going to pay in your mortgage, the higher that interest rate. Very same situation with local governments. So as you take actions that put your, your credit rating at risk, that is going to cost you more as you issue bonds and the interest that you pay. And that is a large chunk of your budget. If you recall, you are a pretty heavily laden community with a lot of debt. Um, so you do need to, and I think that that's part of Davenport's message, was you need to continue to do what you're doing, continue to be good financial stewards, and protect that credit rating that you have. And approximately 50% of that is derived from the flexibility and the ability to respond to emergencies because you have a healthy fund balance. And what I would say is you don't just have one governor on fund balance. It's not just about maintaining the minimum, which is 15%. You also have policies that state that you will not use fund balance for recurring purposes. And you have policies that state that you will limit the use of one-time revenues to recurring for recurring operations. And that means that those funds are there for emergency purposes, hurricanes, tornadoes, you know. It, it, you know, when the economy crashes again and revenues don't come in where we expect and we have to respond in some way. But even then, we need to strengthen your policies that say that when you do dip into them, that you will come up with a plan to immediately replenish those dollars. Typically, it's within a two-year period. So any use of fund balance or discussions of use of fund balance is what they will advise against and I would advise against. Um, it's, it's important that you hold steady to the policies that you have and quite honestly we're talking with them about strengthening those policies, increasing that level, but also in, in you know putting some other governors that are really common practice in other communities that need to be enhanced here in Portsmouth. Then I have one. <clears throat> How, how are you how are you defining fund balance? So in your policy, the fund balance is um, it's taken as a snapshot. So the way the policies are written in all communities, it's that you use the June 30th financial statements because that's the one time that we actually do a report, right. and that we take those dollars and we gauge them as a percentage of the current revenues. And and here that number is currently 15%. Again, it needs to be increased. Um, but that is, fund balance is there to cover, as I said before, the cash flows. Your revenues do not come in on a daily basis. They can, come in. Can I get back to the definition part that I was asking you? Yes. I want to make sure I'm clear. Yes. <clears throat> so when you say that the fund balance is 15%. Yes. And on June 30th, that's where we measure that 15% based on um, what we have in the general fund. Because there's a general fund balance and then there's a fund balance and I'm hearing I'm hearing those terms being used almost interchangeably, but they're not because the general fund balance is this figure that Davenport gave us as of June thirtieth, which is the two hundred and thirty three million that in revenues that the city has received 
up to June 30th, the end of the fiscal year. Is that what this figure represents? So I don't have your CAFR in front of me, but your fund balance, and I do have the page, I think that this we page It's page 21. I do have the page that was provided to you all right. in response to a previous question um, uh, it's towards, page the begin towards the beginning of April. Um, and in that, it showed you that as of June 30th of, uh, I believe it was 17, you had um, $56 million, I believe it was, $56 million in your fund balance. That's in the general fund. Every fund will have a different number. It's a fund. Well, see, but that is your pooled my, hold cash. On, hold on, I, hold on, because I asked you. I'm trying to answer the question. I know, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make sure we're looking at the same I'm figures. I'm trying to answer your question. I know, but I want to make sure we're looking at the Jeez. same figures. Do you have page 921 of the Davenport report? No, the Davenport report is not a part of your budget, so I did not bring that with me okay. tonight. Well, but I'll be happy to well, look at it. Yeah, well, why are, we, why are we getting financial advisors giving us information that we can't Ask questions about. And, What's and, it that you can't ask? Questions? Well, the the two hundred the general message. the general fund revenue according. And Thank you. I'll let you turn to page twenty one. Twenty one. I was going to suggest that you lend her your copy to her. No, I, I needed to reference. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, she I has she has a copy now. Yeah, okay. On 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 page twenty one, mm -hmm. the audited. 1617 fiscal year has general fund revenues at the 232 million 248,000. Yes. All right. Now, as of June the 30th, based on this report, I'm not talking about what you have, based on this report, does that mean that as of June the 30th, that's the total revenues that the city has received during that fiscal year? No, sir, it does not. Okay. So, what does this fit when they have general fund revenues what does that represent because they're they are now basing the 15 percent policy figure off of that which is what sure. which is our policy so the policy references the amount of unassigned fund balance that's sitting as of june 30th and it compares that it benchmarks that against the revenues that you expect in the next budget year so 232 million dollars mm -hmm. was the anticipated revenues so the 15 percent of that would would be what you would be calculating your policy compliance on right right so that represents that 15 percent policy compliance is that what we call our reserves no it is not the 15% is the minimum threshold that you are to retain per policy. Okay, so what determines then what the maximum fund balance should be? There isn't right. a, there is no limitation in your policy for maximum. There is a limitation on minimum, there's a required minimum, but there is no maximum. Right, and uh, according to Davenport, the credit uh, ratings are based on this 15% that we go below, I mean, that's one of the factors, not the only factor, mm -hmm. but I specifically ask, at what point is the credit rating impacted? And he couldn't give a specific, whether it's 14% Tim, a figure. And so I'm, that's why I'm trying to figure, how is it that uh, we're saying that um, this total represents the fund balance when we have a policy in place that creates what the minimum fund balance should be. So I do recall his response. And his response was that it wasn't like a line right. on the percentage. That it had to do with the nature of why you dipped into that and the amount of time that you would take to respond and replenish. Right. And that 50% of your credit rating had to do with that ability. Right, but it and was that, dipping. And that control it was of dipping, not turning to your fund balance it was, it when was, you have you know, a need, that it right. should only be per your policy. But it was so that dipping, was the answer It was dipping into the 15%. Now, the 15% is a minimum. Right. So, again, that is only, you have a multitude of policies, and if you turn in your budget documents to page 2-15, there's an actual schedule that shows you all of those policies, and it tells you about your compliance um, and where you've done well and where you may have some challenges. And so I think, I think that what needs to be paid attention to is, more importantly, the policy that says that you will, you will use recurring revenues for recurring expenses. And, and that's what we do in our personal lives. We, we make sure we live within our means. Um, if you have to turn to the fund balance, there should be an extraordinary reason for that. 
I guarantee you it will be a conversation that you will have with your credit rating agencies. Um, they will want to know what your plan is to replenish it. Um, it is appropriate if there are one-time needs to turn to that, but it is something that they do, they do ask about when you go and meet with them. What determines whether, what determines how much is unassigned? But there's a financial statements are prepared at the end of the year. And there's a that's a pretty intense process. But the unassigned basically are things that are not uh, you don't have have purchase orders at the end of the fiscal year for that you haven't designated certain reserve you know particular for certain purposes. Right. It's the amount that is unobligated and free for use should you have some type of emergency. Which varies. The number will vary every day based upon your expenses. Um, and I think I mentioned last time that we have debt service, that, for example, that uh, is incurred throughout the fiscal year, about 50, $53 million in a year. But almost $18 million of that occurs in the very first month in July. Right. So on July 1st, on July 1st, the city is going to incur some expenses that you mentioned last time that's going to touch into the fund balance. So Those expenses are going to be some one-time expenses, but but you you don't categorize those as having a negative impact because you figure by June 30th, the balance is going to be back to where it needs to be. No, sir. What about liquidity? Yes, liquidity, and there's a difference there. So, so the payments of debt service are budgeted for. They're planned. It's a matter of the timing of the revenues with the expenses, and that's why you have a fund balance, because your expenses are going to go out pretty regularly and unfortunately a little heavy on the front end of your fiscal year. However, your revenues are going to come in on a quarterly basis, sometimes semi-annually. The state is usually on a reimbursement basis, certainly for all of its grants. So you actually have to lean and dip into that fund balance at different points just to operate. But by the time you finish your fiscal year, you should be back to where you were. And the goal is, you know, a budget is a series of estimates. And so the goal is that we never spend more than we take in. Right, but as you said, you dip into it and it goes out. Some of that dipping is for one-time expenses. No, sir, because we're not authorized to dip into it for anything that isn't budgeted, and the budget is balanced. So the revenues, the current revenues, are meeting the current expenses. So there are no expenses going out the door for which we have not identified a current revenue stream for. Okay. That's right. Um, I just had a question. I, I don't know who, who could answer it, but when was the last um, time that the schools received a raise? I mean, and if that was given in whatever <coughs> year it was, then that would need to be reoccurring. This year? Current, reoccurring, reoccurring as well. So. 2% this year from the state. I'm, I'm, some, I'm saying from, from, from the, the city. city. Someone from the city. From, from the from this council, when was the last time that the schools got a raise, and in how long was the period that is reoccurring? You might hold on that because somebody yes. asked Dr. Bracey. Okay. Well, that's, I mean, that's a good question she asked because there was a raise given, and now that raise is part of the funds that the school gets from our general fund that's transferred to the schools. That's so, the so at some point it had to become reoccurring. So, and I wasn't here last year, but what I can tell you is in your current current year, I, I believe there was a two and a half percent given right. to teachers. I, I, I can't speak to what teachers received. That was from yeah. the state? That's it wasn't from, from us? That's from the state. state. I don't know. Yeah. You, you from can't the state. state, not from us. And, and there is a matching component, so it's not purely state dollars. When the state authorizes an increase, there is a component that the locality must provide. We talked about that composite index. All of that plays into that. So the state doesn't pay for 100%. You pay a piece of that. Um, I do believe, I haven't looked at what the most recent um, projection is coming out from the state, but I believe there's a 2.5% that was programmed in for next fiscal year. Um, I, and that's all that I can speak to. Well, when, when the schools moved from, I believe it was around 49 million to 52 million 400, and it has been leveled at that, uh, are, are you suggesting that was all state funds? That was not city city funds that moved? I believe it was 2014 15 when um, the city um, gave a significant increase from 49 to 52.4, which is where we are. The local transfer. Mayor um, um, and members of council, I think what Dr. Um, Whitaker is saying, I think it was that year that the schools received six million. 
dollars. Your question is, as relates to how much of that is the state covering? Is that what no, you're... No, no. Um, they got it out. They, there was a one-time $6 million. That's what it started as, from what we understood. Uh, it, it, was, it went, I believe, I, I'll have to look at the mm -hmm. figures, but that's when but it we continued. got to 52 That's right, 52 that's, right that's right. And what she is saying is that in the positions that are authorized by the state, the city's local dollars support a portion of those SOQ dollars. That's what, what she's saying. Thank you. Any other well, positions? Of yeah, it was um, it was in 2016. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so the question that I heard uh, Councilwoman Lucas Burke ask was, were any of those funds from the city, and if so, aren't those reoccurring since it is still supporting those current salaries? The, the and if it's reoccurring, it touched into the fund balance to do that. I don't know how you all did it. So how you got your six in. million? And it built already built in. Fifty-two four it's, is it's an annual recurring contribution. Annual recurring, right? Like but, it, but it had yes. to start it. It started in two thousand um, fifteen, and so it had to have touched into the general fund. I don't know the history, but um, you do have a local transfer that goes to the schools every year, and it is coming from current revenues. So, thank you. Okay. All right, we have questions of Dr. Bracey. Dr. Bracey, do you want to come up with the Thank you, Dr. Bracey. Thank you for being here and thank you for what you do. You've heard the conversation. Um, we have questions about um, the school versus salary increase. Would you uh, answer that question? Sure. Please? Thank you, um, Mayor Rowe. Members of City Council, um, I'm here this evening to you know, address some of the follow up, I guess, from the public hearing that you had. Well, no, if you would at, answer the questions that were raised here. I am. I am. <clears throat> I just wanted to acknowledge the fact that also that I have um, five board members okay. that are also present uh, tonight. <clears throat> no, I, I don't plan to, to, to get into any of the other information that was d discussed previously. I just want to address these two these two items that, that that have been raised and I'll start with the first with the the new school versus the raise I was well aware that the monies were put into the CIP whether it's proposed by Dr. Patton I've had a chance to see that information As a matter of fact one of our meetings she shared that so I've seen the breakout uh, prior to last week that that there's three million in 19, and for the following two years, it's 17.5. I think that's in each year followed. That that actually will show that the school is in there for the council to vote to vote on that. I think what in the discussion and how the discussion was 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 headed when we were asked the questions about. <clears throat> The raise, you know, the raise kept coming back and forth. You kept hearing about the raise. So when I came up there, you know, that's what I heard as well. And I know I think Councilman Clark said something, and I can't repeat it verbatim, but I know it was something to the effect of to say that, well, we're giving you the money for a school, or is that something that you want? And I know Ms. Lucas Burke said the same thing. So based on that, I took that to say is that we're giving you something, is that is that not enough? At no time was I saying that, I, I said, if it's an either or, yes. That's just, that's my opinion. As Ms. Hines shared, that the board hasn't took action on it. One, because first we need to make sure that it's something that's gonna be approved, <laughs> and, and we will. And we will address it at that time. But as far as the either or, I think MB Khan stated clearly that we need a we need several new schools, <coughs> not just one. 
of all of our elementary schools, the all average age of, it's almost 50, it's 49 years old, if you look at all of our elementary schools with the average age. So by no means do I want to be put in a position to have to choose. So I hope that I'm clearing that up now to say that the study showed that there's a need for a school, and I think that's something that still needs to be included in that. So if it's approved, that it, it can go to the school board to actually vote on the vote on the the matter that that will be at hand. Okay. The, the other question that um, that Ray had was, what is the amount of what is the cost for teachers only? I think that's what I heard you say. Yeah. We um, we really haven't broke it out to to look at that because I, I wasn't. I wasn't designated by the board to actually come up with a figure. Everything that we discussed was looking at um, everyone okay. to be inclusive of, of, of everyone. So the, I wouldn't want to. And that figure is two million. What is that figure? Two point two point three is what we asked for. Four hundred thousand is what we were given to cover the security officers. So where we are now is, is one point nine. Let's take the questions that, I'm sorry. that came up. Uh, Lisa asked a question about when was the last time that uh, uh, there was a salary increase for for the schools? Well, the Is that your question? Yes. Yeah, that's from the council. Oh, from council. I, I don't know when council, I know, as Dr. Whitaker mentioned, in the fiscal year 2015, there was an increase from 48 to 52. So I don't know if that was inclusive of that. But since I've been here, it's been the, the 52-4. You know, it's been it's been a flat, flat, flat budget. Okay. Well, one, one I just wanted to cl clarify the other night when I asked that question, and I think you misunderstood my question. I wasn't asking either or. That wasn't my point. My point was when I was asking the question, I was trying to relate it in the fact that y'all are asking for this extra $2.3 million as to where would it come from. Point being, we have a proposed balanced budget. What would need to be cut to give you all this money. And that was kind of where the question was coming from. It's not like we just have a pool of money sitting there. So I was just bringing the point across that, you know, we have to make the decisions for the entire city and it's nothing against the teachers or anything else. But, you know, I know in this current fiscal year, I believe it was a 2% last year from the state. And, you know, this current fiscal year, you know, we gave our general wages employees, public safety, and then the schools, the teachers got it from the state, which, you know, that's a luxury that our other city employees don't have. You know, they get it from one source and that's us. They don't possibly get it one year from us and one year from the state. So that was more my question was, is what would need to be cut to make that happen? And, you know, looking at the overall budgets, I know this current fiscal year that the school's budget with the funds from us, and everywhere else that y'all secure money from, y'all's budget is larger than ours that the entire rest of the city's operated with. And so that's a little confusing at some points in time, you know, how, how that, that large amount of money's there, you know, with that number of schools. So that was, I just wanted to clear up that I was not asking you an either or question for your budget, but where would this money come from? Right, and I wouldn't be able to tell you Right, and I just, yeah. I just, yeah, and I, I, it was just. That's why when the question came, I mean, how I would I know what you can, what I, you can, what I, you can cut? Exactly, and I was just making a point that it's it's very tough, and you know, Dr. Patton has done a wonderful job presenting this to us, and that's you know, I was just saying from our perspective, it's hard decision all the way around. It's not, you know, we can't give everybody money every time. Right, but I think we we got the questions that have come up, so that we can make progress. Um, and, and thank you. We, we might have another question. Um, Dr. Bracey just said that it's $2.3 million for a salary increase. Uh, Dr. Whitaker is proposing that we use fund balance uh, to, to fund that. Let's see where we are on his recommendation. And go ahead. I was going to make a compromise suggestion. All right. Um, I, I, I think we have a, a philosophical difference on what you use fund balance money for. I'm not willing to spend fund balance money on recurring expenses. However, 
just like Dr. Patton has recommended the $3 million for the A&E for the new school or the um, capital one-time expenses for capital projects. If there was something that we could pay for for the school system that was more capital related, that's one-time related, maybe it's another bus. <coughs> I don't know another ten buses that that would free them up to make to use their own budget for raises. I wouldn't have a problem with that. Okay. Well, let's let's take them one okay. issue at a time. Um, again, the three million. The way it's been explained is the three million for the A and E is bond finance, right? Which means if it's three million, then the debt service on that's a hundred thousand. So there's not much. Three hundred thousand. There's not. Not much money there. So let's find out where we are as a group so we can keep trying to get to the finish line here on Dr. Whitaker's proposal that we use fund balance to uh, fund the $2.3 million um, salary increase that the schools are asking for. How do you feel now, Bill? Fund balance? Yeah. No on the fund balance, but uh, look, look at the risk management. Uh, uh, category. That's okay. that, that's that's been uh, over what was uh, what the actual was over what was adopted in the current budget is 169 percent uh, and 13 uh, uh, percent this year. I like to know what's driving that number because there there lies a lot of variance. Okay. That's in the risk management fund. But no to your okay. question. Okay. That's. Okay. We'll park the, the risk management okay. possibility. No, to fund balance, I mean, it's no way possible after we've heard from our CFO and the report from Davenport, you know, giving us, you know, that we can't use reoccurring fund expenses, so definitely not from fund balance. No. No for reoccurring. No for me. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> now, that's off the table. Let's, let's look. look your suggestion, Bill. What page are you on, Mr. Uh, 3-11. And everybody uh, turn to 3-11? Yeah. Your, uh, 820 risk uh, management fund. Uh, are you and your team at 3 11? We're trying to get there. The bill for us, where, uh, well, what you said the risk can management. Can you point fund? to the fund that you're looking at? Uh, 820. 820. Eight. I'm looking at the uh, difference on what what's proposed versus uh, what the actual was in uh, 2017. It's uh, 4.5 million, almost 4.6 million difference. I'm asking what's what's uh, driving that number. That's a tremendous increase, and that. So what is, what is it? I don't see the full thing. Yeah, the variance. 17 for 2017 to 2018. Oh, I see the difference now. Yeah, you see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's a huge difference. Right. Mayor, right off the top of our head, we cannot answer that, but we are assured that every piece in there, we have the justification as to why it has increased. Okay. 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 With work Would management, work, 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 workers' comp, and the um, claims, mm -hmm. claims that come forward. So, yeah, we can get that. We get that information tomorrow. Oh, yeah, we can have it to you. Maybe to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Didn't, we'll have it for didn't we park an extra million dollars in there or two years ago when we were talking about uh, the
the schools. Of what uh, so I don't know. Health. No, it's when you. It is when you were here. When we were talking about them. Um, I don't think of the risk. No, we didn't do anything with either. our risk management in schools. Okay. Nothing. This is all the cities. Gotcha. I want to make sure that we're. Okay, you we can have, have that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> are we through with risk management? Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have a question on the OPEB funding. Um, we moved three million uh, into this <coughs> fiscal year to fund OPEB. Correct. OPEB is funded now. Right. Mm -hmm. um, was it required that we had to put three million? Where did the three million figure come from? That was the figure that based on, um, I guess, from 08 or 09, whenever the city, prior to my coming, set aside an amount right. to start the fund. So the fund has been started, and in this budget, as we explained, we have one million because we have to contribute. Starting it is not our contribution amount. We have one million in this budget as our contribution. Right. Proposing two million next year, which we've right. said to the to the group we're with. And then the year after that, three million going forward. Well, my, my question is, uh, how much was necessary to fund it? I know we put three million in there, but was three million necessary to I, fund I, it? I can't answer that right off. Uh, and what, how, did, how did you come up with the three million? Just because it was sitting in uh, a fund, you moved three that, million over. That so. three million was set aside for OPEB right. in 20 whenever. Right, okay. right. So my question is, how did you know that is? It took three million to initially fund that. That was okay. the amount that the city set aside to start their OPEB fund. Dr. Pat, yes. you can give us what's called the ARC, the annual required contribution. For and that's really what yeah. the question is. Okay. Two point eight million. What? Two point eight million. Is the ARC? Yes. And that comes from the That's supposed to be an actual actual yeah. annual contribution. Um, so is that <coughs> two point pay uh, two point eight are oh, you good get up there totally from the general fund or is it from all uh, the funds that, that Yes, sir. Um, there's a breakout by the fund depending on where the employees actually work. Um, I believe the general fund portion was $2.8 million. I suspect that's why the $3 million was identified, because that's an annual amount that you should be setting aside that should grow. Um, and then, you know, we, we've only, we did invest the $3 million, I believe, last week. So that's been put into an OPEB trust. Um, moving into next budget year, you're only going to put $1 million in, but you need to build to the $3 million. So, so the question I was asking, <clears throat> did it have to be three million, or we just put the three million in? It should be three million. So, it to your be. to your credit, you did the right thing by identifying three million. Had we not put three in, then we just would have to have funded further years out. Yes, sir, and that's part of that liability is so big because you have not done that on an annual basis. Seven five million. This is totally something different, but I was just curious about it because I really hadn't noticed it before now. But on the uh, page 7-13, with judicial for the sheriff's department? Mm -hmm. Sure. Seven thirteen. <clears throat> Looking at the top line, salaries, the increase of salaries from fiscal year 2018 to the proposed 2019 is 428427 more dollars. And I guess my question is, is that going to be a percentage across the board raise for the Sheriff's Department? Or is that money just given to them and they can make the decisions of, of who gets the money? Dr. Pat, did you hear the question? These were, this is a result of state raises. I'm okay. Sorry. State raises. Okay. Answer that. Thank you. Propose. Propose. The state doesn't even have a budget. Propose. Right. And that, that's uh, the sheriff has put his in there as a projection. Okay. 
Good man. Any other questions? All right. Do you see any other um, money in the general fund? No, oh, man. That did, okay. They're struggling. Forever. The the whole vacancy uh, issue uh, with uh, HRM, and I know during the last report uh, it mentioned that a majority of those vacancies are with um, public safety. And so um, in filling those vacancies, how many of them are going to be filled in this fiscal year? Uh, we, I don't have that report right in front of me, but we gave you all a detailed report on that and where we were with recruitment, where we were with promotions, which will be coming forward for both, and uh, where we were with um, advertising for positions. And we do um, uh, propose in this budget a 5% um, funding turnover for, for, for vacancy, through vacancy. So. <clears throat> All right. I mean, any other questions? So, so all of those ninety, it was ninety some positions. I thought I remember in that report they're going to all be filled within this fiscal year. We are looking for them to be. So, you, but you're not sure whether all of them are going. We, to be. we, we are. All of it's a projection. I mean, people leave, people come. Right. So, we, we are working to fill them both fire and police. So, so in this fiscal year, well, I don't. You probably couldn't answer okay. how many you hired in this. Oh, I can't well, answer that. Well, how many come out of the academy? Um, there is graduation this on Thursday. I think there are 18 in the first fire academy. There's another academy going in now. So far is pretty much all of their positions other than people leaving or retiring. They're pretty much filling all of their positions. And, and that process, I thought it took how long, more than a year. Well, they've been in, they, they are still paid. I mean, although I'm in the academy, I'm on the payroll. Everybody, I mean, they're not in there free. Any other questions? Those are positions that are filled, paid. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.